Welcome to a video on Simpson's rule of numerical integration. When trying to evaluate a definite integral analytically, sometimes it's very difficult or even impossible to determine a function's antiderivative. And when analytic methods fail, we can use a numerical approach to approximate a definite integral. And Simpson's rule is a numerical method to approximate a definite integral that uses parabolas. Let's take a look at how this works. We've already discussed how to approximate a definite integral using rectangles. And you can see here, we were trying to approximate this definite integral from zero to four using two rectangles. We've also discussed how to approximate the definite integral using trapezoids, using the trapezoidal rule, as we see here. Again, you can see this is a much better approximation than using rectangles. And Simpson's rule uses parabolas to approximate definite integrals. Notice when we select Simpson's rule, we have a parabola that now spans across two intervals rather than one and it looks like it's even a better approximation than the trapezoidal rule and you can see the reason why is because a degree two equation can curve whereas using trapezoids we can only draw straight lines across intervals. Let's go and take a look at one more function. Again here we're seeing on this interval we're using two rectangles to approximate the definite integral. Next we have the trapezoidal rule and then thirdly which we're discussing in this video is Simpson's rule. And one of the things I want you to notice here is that we use two intervals to create this parabola rather than one for rectangles and trapezoids. Let's go ahead and try to develop the idea of Simpson's rule. We won't be able to go over all the details because of the short video, but hopefully you'll be able to make the important connections. Again, we see a function in blue, and in red we have a parabola through three points spanning two intervals from x sub zero to x sub two. So what we're saying down here is that the definite integral of the function is approximately equal to the definite integral of p of x, which is this quadratic function. And if we were to integrate ax squared plus bx plus c with respects to x from x sub zero to x sub two, we could show that it's equal to all of this down here. Now we don't have time to go through all of that here, but what I want you to notice is, just as a trapezoidal rule, we have a value out here. And in this case, it's the width of two intervals divided by six. And notice inside these brackets, the coefficients are one, four, and then one. So what's gonna happen is when we start summing the area under multiple parabolas, the next parabola is going to share this common endpoint. Let's go and take a look at the formula for Simpson's rule. Again, we can approximate this def integral using Simpson's rule given by, there's a few things I want to point out here. The first thing you'll notice on the previous screen, we had x2 minus x sub zero divided by six instead of b minus a divided by three n. Well, remember that x2 minus x sub zero spanned two intervals where each interval has a length of b minus a divided by n. So if we take the width of one interval and multiply by two, it would equal x2 minus x sub zero. And now you can see the two and the six simplify. And this is where we come up with b minus a divided by three n. Next thing you'll notice too on the previous screen, the next thing you may have noticed is on the previous screen when we're dealing with one parabola, the coefficients of the functions were one, four, one. And this value for x was x sub zero plus x sub two divided by two. Well remember if you add those and divide by two, you would get the average or the midpoint or x sub one. And one last thing, the previous example was just using one parabola, which had coefficients of one, four, one. Well, if we use two parabolas, the next one would be one, four, one as well. And so you'll notice that we would use f of x sub two twice. So we have a pattern of one, four, two, four. And then if we were done, we'd have a one, but if we continued, we'd have another two, another four, and then another one. So that's where these coefficients are coming from. Okay, so I hope all of that makes sense. There's a lot going on here, and it can be shown, but not in 10 minutes or less. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. We wanna use Simpson's rule to approximate the definite integral where n is equal to four. So we can see from our definite integral, interval is going to be from one to three. So we'll divide the interval from one to three into four equal parts. Here's one and here's three. We'll divide it in half and then in half again. 
Remember the width of each interval is b minus a divided by n, so we'd have three minus one divided by four, which is equal to one half or 0 0.5. Now remember, so now even though we are gonna go ahead and just use this formula, remember that to use Simpson's rule, we actually, to use Simpson's rule, one parabola is going to span two intervals. So we'd actually be using two parabolas to approximate this definite integral on the interval from one to three. Let's go ahead and see how this formula is going to work. So we have b minus a divided by 3n, b minus one divided by three times four, all of this times f of x sub zero, well x sub zero is one, so we have f of one plus, notice the next coefficient is four, so I have four times f of x sub one, well if we know that a is equal to one, and each interval has a width of 0 0.5, this would be f of 1.5. Notice the next coefficient is two, so plus two times f of two. Again, we're just adding 0.5 to each x value. So we have one, four, two, next we have four, so plus four f of 2.5, and then, and our interval ends at three, so this is the last function value, so we go back to a coefficient of one, so f of three. So here we have three minus one, that'd be two over 12, or one-sixth. Let's use our calculator to determine all of these function values. So the first thing we'll do is press y equals and type in the function, I've already done that, nine minus x squared. Next we'll go back to the home screen, and we're gonna enter all of this in using function notation, but instead of f, we'll use y1. The way to do that is press vars, right arrow, enter, and we'll select y1 by pressing enter. So we have f of one, we'll type in y1 of one, plus four times, this will be y1 of 1.5, vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and then in parentheses, 1.5, plus the next coefficient is two, vars, right arrow, enter, enter. We just entered in an x value of 1.5, so now we use an x value of two, plus four times f of 2.5. And the last function value was f of three. So we'll type in y1 of three. Enter. So this has a value of 56. So all of this is 56. This is equal to 28 thirds, or nine and one third. Now let's go ahead and compare our approximation to the, to the real value of this definite integral. We can do that here by pressing math option nine. So again, we typed in our integrand, the variable x, the lower limit of integration, and the upper limit of integration. And in this case, our answers are exactly the same. That doesn't always happen. The reason it worked out that way here is because if you look at the original integrand, it's a degree two equation. So if we use a degree two equation to approximate the definite integral of a degree two function, of course they will be the same. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you and have a good day.